G'day guys, Calvin, Cartoon Company in New Zealand. As many of you know, I do 1UZ engines, but I'm also a, a, a link dealer. Probably a little bit uh, at the far end of the link dealer, I'm not quite your normal dealer. I work from a family farm, a little workshop on the farm. But funnily enough, in the last week, I moved uh, 9 ECUs and a couple of can lambda, so... I do move a few at times, but generally through the year I've got a pretty steady flow of ECUs, and I also do a lot of setup. And we're going to look today over G4X. I've got the software set up here, and I've got an email from a man um, describing his problem. And we're going to go through the process of of solving this problem. What we find because it isn't actually a problem that he's having. What he's missing out on is he's just lacking a bit of knowledge of how the system works and what's going on. So let's look at seeing if we can solve that. We'll look at his email for a start. That should be right here. So it's from Michael. Um, and we'll just give this a bit, I think there'll be a bit more of this. So I'd, I'd been having another discussion with him, um, and he says here, understandable, uh, that's re replying to my previous comments. I've been trying to get help from Link on my Lambda issue, because it's wired correctly, sensor gets hot, but no readouts. Haven't messed with it while, <laughs> haven't messed with it in a while since waiting for them, been a couple of weeks and a few emails. I'm guessing have to buy a new module. Mm, we could probably look at that Lambda issue as well. So we might just keep that in our mind and we'll, we'll do a couple of logs on that as well. I got it to run by adjusting the idle a bit, referring to his engine. Um, for some reason, my timing is advanced to 20 when it was at 10. I'm not sure if it's the adjustments in the tune or the bad cam sensor. They are the originals. Now this is the what we're going to look at today. And as I said, for those of you that know what's going on, uh, don't wreck it for the rest of us. Uh, we don't want spoilers. Um, but we'll go through and show why it's doing what it's doing. And I asked, have you set base timing using the correct procedure? We'll discuss that as we go along. Hopefully I'll remember to pop that in. Um, his reply, oh, has just got a bit more, let's see. So I went through, so I went through, checked my timing belt marks. My timing there is fine. I start and run and get it going. While checking the timing, it shows that it would probably be, be advanced 20 degrees. I go into the settings and adjust the timing. When I click on, uh, when I click the box to adjust, before entering numbers, I hear the idle smooth out and change. I look and it's dead on in 10. I exit without any changes. It's back to that spot again. I have no idea why it's doing this. The only thing that isn't hooked up is the Lambda apparently. There's no 120 ohm resistor in the Lambda H and L wires. So those are on order. But from what I've read, that shouldn't in any way change my timing or cause it to fluctuate. Thanks for your time, Mike. Um, now, we'll just touch on that 120 ohm resistor. On a very short CAN bus, you can normally get away without the resistor, okay? Um, but not always. It doesn't hurt to have it there. Um, now, the timing. Uh, so, we'll, we'll talk about that a little bit in, in the timing and the setup procedure as well. Um, so, what I asked for, uh, hello Michael, can you please send me your present tune profile? I will make a change and send it back to you to load in and then I would like some log data and I'll explain what's happening. And that's, you can see I had a bit of a plan for what's going on in this video. And uh, he sent me this tune profile. <coughs> I'm just going to download that. We'll get that underway. 
And I'll go over here. Here is the G4X platform. I mean, he's working on a... Oh, I think it's an Atom. I think. I'll tell you in a minute, eh? So we're going to open a file up here. Um, and we go to my downloads, and there should be a tune. Look at that. Right there. Oh, it might be a monsoon. There we go. It's it's pretty interesting to see. It's pretty easy to tell normally. You just, if you go to analog inputs, and we go input pins. And this is, this is a great thing about the new software. And there's a lot of people that don't like the new G4X software because they're used to the, the last two platforms of software. But look at this. I can really, really quickly go in. Look at the input pins and see where pins are and where things are going. And this is fantastic. Now, when I talked about the the timing, it's the base timing. So normally you go into here, trigger setup, and you go to the calibrate. So I'm using the left click on the little arrows. So if I want to expand anything, I click the little arrow. Or I want to take it away, I, I left click that arrow. And I go to calibrate. He sees at 355. Uh, that to me indicates that he's using the the crank side cam sensor. Reference timing is at 10. So to set the timing, you have the engine running um, or cranking if you're trying to start it up. But once you've got it running, you should check it running. He clicks this. And it brings up these numbers here, and he checks with his timing light, and it is at this this base 10 degrees. One thing that's really important that I often get wrong is if you do adjust this number, um, you do have to push enter. Okay, you need to push enter before it actually saves that change. Okay, so at that point it's dropping to 10 degrees. And then, of course, it, it goes over here. And it goes off this table here. So I would guess he's probably idling at about a thousand RPM. And around about these zones here. So the timing would be at around about 20 degrees. Are there other adjustments? And that's the real simple answer. Okay. You, all you're doing with your base timing is you are telling the computer where to reference it off. It doesn't know. Information in, information out. It doesn't know where it is. And so if you'd say, let's say your, your cam sensor is around, or your crank sensor is around the wrong way, it's going to be 15 degrees in a different place. Um, so the time is going to be in the wrong place. And, and if it thinks it's at 10, but it's 15 degrees in a different place, the, the computer doesn't work that out unless you tell it where it is. And that's why, as the technician, we check it, put it in the right place. So this is why it's at 20. But I'm going to go through, and I'm actually going to set up some logging. Um, what other what other adjustments are available for this? So if we actually click into ignition corrections right here, we've got no coolant temp trim. And no air temp trims. So there's no other trims going on right there at the moment. Generally, we would I would put a couple of those in. There's no 4D table, no 5D table. And the dual table is going to be off. We've got dual control there. So we've only got... What, has he got individual coils? I think he's got individual coils. So that... That's close enough there for that. Um, so here is this timing table. So as soon as he stops clicking on it, it goes into this zone here. Okay, and that's why the timing is changing. And you can see when I go into this one, this map here, it's going to bring up the timing angle that the computer is expecting to generate. So one thing to do is to do the old calibrate thing. How far back did I put it? Oh, I put it way back. So I'm just using the little arrows up here. If I go back down to calibrate, we'll do it in the um, configuration screen here. Calibrate. 
So we go there and we expect the timing to be at this number here. If it's not, we adjust this number here and to ensure, ensure that it stays at that number there as you rev it, we adjust that one. That's These base numbers here work really well on a 1UZ. So that should be pretty close. And on a 1UZ, if this, there's some base numbers, okay, and if you get to know the base numbers, and the timing's not where they sh is with the base numbers, then you've got a problem. Though they've changed it on this. So this is for a non-VVTI running the 12-tooth trigger wheel um, and individual cores. Okay, so we're done. So as soon as you do that, and we pop over here, bam, you can then recheck your timing, and it should be at around about whatever this dial here shows, whatever the, the timing the computer is expecting. And that's why his timing is moving. Actually, I think, I think what I'm going to do right now is that's explained the timing thing. I think I'm going to fire up again, do a separate video on setting up the logging for this particular man. Um, so, hey, hope that's been helpful. I can going to upload this one for Michael. He can have a read. He can have a watch. He'll understand what's going on better, sharing some knowledge. And then we'll look at doing some logging. Uh, if you're interested in that, watch the next one. Hey, talk to you again soon. Catch you later.